TV Crazy Man here with more hilarious goofs from The Andy Griffith Show featuring Ron Howard's real-life dad, ghostly apparitions, a spooky goober goof, Barney's motorcycle, and much more. The corner, Don. Right. Don! Hold it right there! On the episode, The Big House, just before Barney jumps out from behind the crate to surprise these two cops in the alley that he thinks are criminals, you can hear what sounds like the director shout out Don to give actor Don Knotts his cue when to jump out. Not completely sure, but that is what it sounds like to me. What do you think? The corner down there. Right. Don! Hold it right there! To the corner down there. Right. Don! Hold it right there! On the episode of Black Day from Mayberry, two treasure agents come into the courthouse. They take off their hats while they're waiting for Andy. One of them is played by Rance Howard, Ron Howard's dad in real life. Now watch what happens when Opie walks into the courthouse. Where's Pa? Yes, Opie, where is Pa? Well, don't worry. Rance will be back in just a second. Now, I did read that uh, something came up and Rance had to replace the actor, actually. But it didn't say what that something was. It just sort of indicated that it may have been something serious. Do you remember the drunk chicken from the episode Ant Bee the Crusader? That rooster's got the blind stacks. I have evidence that the chicken was not actually drunk with moonshine. If you look to your right, you'll see a string that someone was actually using to pull the chicken's head around. I guess they couldn't get the chicken to do this on its own for extra worms or something. You know, I, I hear that chicken unions are, are pretty tough to deal with. Remember when Barney got a motorcycle? Here's one that I read that a lot of people think is a goof, but I think I have a simple explanation for it. You see, some folks think that the sidecar just tore off because it was so old, and that was the joke. And the goof is the blocks of wood that we clearly see that are holding up the sidecar that Andy is sitting on. But I always figured the old guys were just playing a prank on Barney, and they were the ones that put the blocks of wood there. But unless my eyes are deceiving me or Don Knotts got about 15 years younger, that doesn't look like he was the one riding away. Let me know what you think in the comments. Goggles, any foreign objects in eyes, that is gravel and or bugs. Now Barney, those goggles aren't going to stop any bugs without the safety lens. You'd think he would have known that when he popped himself in the eye. You know, you had no idea how many times I kept saying Googles instead of goggles. Well, some folks would have never let me live that one down. You know, I think Ernest broke a window made out of paper because glass doesn't blow around in the wind. Now, you might say that it went through the curtain and the curtain was made out of paper. Now, personally, I've never had curtains that were made of paper, so I, I don't know. Uh, nah, 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 you're gold. Cold! You're cold! Now, you gotta love the episode Divorce Mountain Style. I mean, this is one of my favorites. Not only do we get uh, Denver Paul, a.k.a. Uncle Jesse from the Dukes of Hazard, but we also get Bob Denver from Gilligan's Island. In this scene, we hear Bob Denver supposedly pecking on the window. But when Andy closes the blinds on Bob, it looks to me that it might have hit him right on the nose, which of course means there was no window there at all. Y'all see any glass there? What do you think? Are you batty? Well, Barney, I just wanted to know if you seen the window or not. All right, just for that, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Okay, maybe it was a dumb question. Later in the episode, Andy and Barney are in a barn getting ready to put Barney on a horse. It's all part of a plot to trick the darlings so Charlene will get back with her husband, Dud. But if they are alone, then where did that hand come from? Bizarre, the unexpected. Believe it or not. You folks aren't from Mayberry, North Carolina. Yeah, you heard of it? In the episode, Taylor's in Hollywood. This bus seems to jump forward in time and space right between two sentences of a conversation. In the episode, Aunt B learns to drive. I think they tried to cover up the fact that Stuntman is driving for Aunt B by putting a hat on her. Poor old Goober, I don't think he got a Stuntman. Of course, why did Andy think it was a good idea to let somebody named Goober teach his Aunt B how to drive? Am I close enough to the curb? Am I close enough to the curb? 
Of course, Aunt B hits a tree later on. Oh, please! Please don't tell Andy! Oh, okay, I won't. The car seems to move around by itself afterwards. When Aunt B looks at it later, it appears to be away from the tree. Then Andy comes and bumps the car just a little bit, and it's back up next to the tree. Then when he's looking at the car, I can't even tell there's a scratch on it anymore. Now I'm looking on a computer screen uh, right now. If you're looking on a big screen TV, you might see something I'm missing. In the episode, The Gypsies, a blanket on a gypsy woman becomes a raincoat almost before our very eyes. Just after the camera switches to Andy, then Aunt B, and then back to the gypsies. Things sometimes happen faster in Mayberry than we give them credit for. On the episode, Goober's Replacement. Goober goes on vacation and his girlfriend fills in for him at the gas station. Andy and Floyd come in, check things out, and find it super busy. Notice the cars that are in line, and that the gray car in the beginning of the line takes off. But much later, when Goober comes back after vacation, the same exact cars are still in line. You know, the guy in the green car could still be there today. Does anybody else think it's strange that Mayberry has paved sidewalks and yet has dirt streets? Couldn't they have at least put some gravel down? Smart, Alex. A rock and roll singer comes to Mayberry and he's really good at playing the guitar and possibly his shirt. Maybe just the air. I don't know about you, but I'm still trying to figure out how in the world he does that. Down easy, you know. See ya. You know, the Darling family was into some spooky stuff with all those hillbilly curses and all that. So it's no surprise that as they drove off once again, we can see ghostly apparitions in Andy's window. Believe it or not. Now watch how unbelievably quick that Ron Howard is in this episode. Uncle, I can play something already. Some way between Andy and Aunt B and the piano, Opie changed shirts. How did he do that? That's incredible! Well, I guess I have done a little living in my time. You can say that again. In the episode, Opie's most unforgettable character, Goober's lips don't move and he sounds kind of creepy. You can say that again. Are we hearing his thoughts? Why did they go back and dub that seemingly non-essential line back in there? Should we be scared? You can say that again. Good to see you back. Hmm. Looks like the thing from the Adams Family is back again. We got lots more goose and fun facts on the way from various classic TV shows and a few movies, so keep your eye out on the TV Crazy Man channel. Well, just in case you missed it before, the next few goose on this video come from my first Andy Griffith goose video. On the first episode of The Andy Griffith Show, The New Housekeeper, after Emma leaves the courthouse, is Andy mouthing Barney's lines or just trying to get a word in edgewise? Disregard and keep off the grass signs and everything. Well, Mayberry's just gonna turn into a regular sin town. It's gonna turn into a regular sin town. I kind of think Andy knew what Barney was gonna say before he said it. Well, you took the word right out of my mouth. Of course, this is the uh, episode where Aunt B learns to fish and play baseball to impress Opie. On account of Opie was sad for losing her housekeeper Rose to holy matrimony. You're not losing me forever. I'll come back and visit a lot. Rose never did, of course, but she did have a doppelganger show up for a couple episodes named Clara Lindsay. You picked me to be your deputy because you, I was the best suited for the job. And, and I want to thank you, Cousin Andy. <laughs> In this episode, we learn that Andy and Barney are cousins. Aside from maybe a couple more mentions in the early episodes, future episodes don't ever mention them being related anymore. On the episode, The Guitar Player, James Best makes his first appearance as a guitar player, but everybody wants to know, did he actually play that guitar? Are you kidding? I have two guitars, which I did. But he did act like he was playing the guitar very well. In this episode, they had a pair in a scene that didn't want to sit still. There's a worm in it. <laughs> Opie, that's beside the point. Maybe there was a worm in it because it was up and down two more times. Of course, maybe I'm carrying this thing a little too far. You don't have to carry the thing that far. Why not? Cause... You know, I think I caught Andy littering. See if you can find yourself another catcher, Opie. I think Andy must have thrown his catcher's mitt into the street. 
Here's a magic trick from my favorite Andy Griffith episode of all time, Christmas Story. Watch Barney swap Christmas cards in the blink of an eye. It proves that Barney's hands are quicker than the eye. How'd he do that? You know, he always did say that his hands were lethal weapons. <laughs> Let me slow it down for you so you can actually see Barney's hands in motion. Just imagine seeing this face coming towards you in a dark alley. Barney Five is, uh, he's one of my heroes. He taught me everything I know. Yeah, watching the Andy Griffith Show. Oh, thank you. I think you much. See you later. This is Claude, Kung Fu Ninja Cat, signing off from Freddy Cat Cartoons. Bye. Hey, ain't me. Why, Sheriff Taylor? Have you ever noticed on old TV shows the occasional mysterious hand pulling a door shut? Apparently, someone got paid to do that. No, it gets more peculiar all the time. Keep your eye on Floyd. As the mayor speaks, Floyd mouths the words right along with him. Lights into hollering one more time, I'm gonna bust a gusset. Lights into hollering one more time, I'm gonna bust a gusset. Well, where Barney's been all the morning? What? Well, there's that hand again. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear that Mayberry looks like it was made of paper sometimes. Nah, uh, it's probably just my imagination. I don't know, I think he was aiming right at Andy. That was really close. I just got other things to do. I'm just too blame busy to die right now. <laughs> it just goes to show you that no matter what, the good guys always win in the end. In this episode, I found an instance where Barney Fife breaks the law of all people. Now Barney, who's gonna clean that up? Now this may even be jaywalking. I'm not really sure. I was never very good about that law. And I'm not a law expert, but should Andy be parking next to a fire hydrant? Here's another amazing magic trick. In this episode, the skipper from Gilligan's Island, Alan Hale Jr., plays a farmer named Jeff who's on the hunt for a wife. Now Thelma Lou walks past the skipper and Barney to get coffee from the kitchen. There's no time jump or anything, but somehow she materializes in the living room without even having to walk past them. How about that little buddy? Ain't that a good one? <laughs> Believe it or not, Alan Hill Jr. called Barney Fife Little Buddy a year before he called Gilligan Little Buddy. It was a phrase that uh, he liked to use. Nip it! Nip it in the butt! Now, according to my research, Nip It in the Bud first appeared in this episode as well. Do you want to see the fastest cow that you ever did see? Well, Sheriff? That cow is so fast, it's like one second he's there and the next second he's not. In this episode, Otis about knocks down a brick wall. <laughs> you know, I think the booze is making him a mite heavy. Oh, you bet it is. In this particular episode, Barney disguises himself as Grandma Walton. But he just can't make up his mind which dress he wants to wear from one second to the next. That's an animal track! In this episode, Barney discovers elephant tracks, but it turns out just to be Opie playing around. At least that's what we're led to believe, but it also looks like Opie isn't making a dent in the ground with that phony elephant foot. So surely there must be another prankster involved somewhere. Thanks, y'all, and uh, have a great day. And please comment. Let me know what you think about the video. And, uh, you know, hit the like and the bell. If you hit the bell, it'll let you know whenever I put out a new video. Appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a great day.